Hi folks, it's Steve Frayne. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple ETL, Extract, Transform, and Load Pipeline using Pentaho Data Integration, which is more colloquially known as Kettle by most people. Kettle is essentially an ETL tool that's going to allow us to design a pipeline in a graphical way and load data from some source or extract data from some source and load it into another one and possibly do some transformations along the way or after our load is finished. So I'm going to replicate the example we saw in a class the other night where I build a simple pipeline that takes data from a CSV file, comma separated values file, loads it into a table inside of Oracle and then executes a simple SQL script after the fact to update those values. So you can see that I have Spoon, which is the Kettle EDI, open on screen here. And I'm going to choose New Transformation. And I get all these uh, inputs, outputs, and other design widgets on the left-hand side here. So as I said, I'm going to be taking data from a CSV file. Let's take a quick look at that. Here's the CSV file I'm going to be pulling data in from. It's employee ID, first name, and last name, and then data values associated with those. So I'm going to start an input job and notice I have lots of different data source choices here including XML, uh, table input which would be a relational table, text file, CSV like I said earlier and a host of other things. So Kettle makes it very easy to pull data from a variety of sources and load it into a variety of formats doing transformations along the way. So let's start with our CSV file input. We'll configure that. We said that it was employee data so I'm going to say something like employee CSV something like that. We're going to browse and select our file name and conveniently it's already in the right directory so we'll pull that up. As we looked at our file we saw that it had a delimiter of a comma in between columns but it did not have any quotes or anything else around the value so we're going to take off this enclosure which rep would represent quotes and such things around the value. There was a header row there with the column names at the top so we're going to keep header row present checked and everything else looks pretty good. So I'm going to say get fields and it's going to tell me how many lines to sample. It's a trivial number of lines in our file so we'll just leave it at 100 and it runs through and it has intuited the structure of the file and it sees that we have an amp ID column, a first name and a last name. Amp ID is obviously an integer type, first name and last name are obviously string types and it's picked up the maximum length of the values it happened to find in the example data it has so far. I'm going to say preview and I can see that it's pulling in my data correctly. There's an example of the preview data, so it's able to pull on those values, the values from that file without any difficulty. So it looks like we're in pretty good shape there. I'm going to say OK, and I think I have my data source set up correctly. So I'm going to think about where I want to put that data, and I want to put it into a table inside of Oracle XE. So I'm going to choose table output. Again, I have many different choices. I could have sent it to an Excel file. I could have converted it to JSON. I could have written it into LDAP like Active Directory and a variety of other things. But I'm going to turn it into a table output. I'm going to configure that table output now. And I'm going to call it uh, uh, Oracle XE, the version of Oracle that's running on my machine. I'm going to say employee table or emp table connection. There's no connection defined yet in this workbook, so I'm going to have to define a new one. I'll say new. It's thinking about it. I'm going to put this in s some instructions that uh, are associated with the homework assignment, but in order to reach into an Oracle database, you're going to have to have certain drivers on your machine. So there's a, a jar file, Java archive file, that I've set up on my machine that allows it to connect to the Oracle database. So in the homework assignment, I'm going to have instructions on where you can get that Java archive file so that you can put it into your um, PDI setup so that it's going to be able to read from Oracle. But trust that I've done that here. So I'm going to put in my host name of localhost since I'm connecting to this computer here. My database name is XE, sort of the default database name in Oracle XE. I'm going to leave most of those other things undone. And then I'm going to put in my username frame that I usually use to connect to Oracle XE. And whatever the password for the account you're using is, I'll hit test quickly. Oh, it says it wants me to give it a name, which I forgot to do. So I'll just call it Oracle XE. Now I'm going to test. And it says things are OK. I'll say OK here. And my new connection is set up. I have a 
target schema. I can just kind of leave that alone right now. It'll be the default schema I'm connecting to with my user ID. I have the option to truncate the table. So what I'd like to do is every time this load uh, process is run, I'm going to truncate the table I'm connecting to. And uh, it's going to blow away all the records when I truncate it, and then we'll refill those records with the contents of employee CSV. But for the moment, um, I, I'm going to set up some other things right now, but I want these two tasks to be connected. Because once I connect these two tasks with what we call a hopping kettle, then there's some intelligence about the structure of the data that we're going to get from MCSV that we can feed into this job, and we can actually create a table automatically for ourselves. So I've, if you didn't see, I high, drew basically a box around them to highlight them. I right click and say new hop, and it's creating a new hop. You'll see me sometimes, uh, windows are opening on my second monitor, so I'm dragging them in here into the monitor that I'm recording. And it's going to say hop between these two steps. So I get my little arrow there. And now that I've connected these two steps, there's going to be some intelligence inside of, or some intelligence made available to this job here that I'm going to be able to use. So we know where we're, we're pulling the data, or we're sending the data to a certain connection. And I'm going to say target table, I'm just going to make up a name. Uh, emp etl, so that's the name of the table that I'm going to send the data to. And now I can click specify database fields here, and then we get some interesting behavior. So if I click on the SQL button, oh, not receiving any fields from previous steps. Something is awry. Ah, sorry, database fields, get fields, that's what I should have done first. So you'll see I went to the database fields tab here, clicked get fields, and then it read the data from that source, that MCSV, and of course you'll notice that these are the structures. You can see the field that it's proposing for my uh, new table that it wants to build, and also the data that's coming out of the stream. The stream being the data that was pulled out of that CSV file. So these two things are matching up. And now that I've uh, hooked them together appropriately, if I press the SQL button, some SQL gets written for me. And this employee MPETL, which is the name I fed in up here, gets created. And it's doing some Oracle specific data types that match the notion that this is an integer and this is a string, which is what we saw uh, when we pulled the data from the MCSV. And it's notice it's doing the, the translation here that a varchar2 is turned, uh, that the string is turned into a varchar2, which is an Oracle specific data type. So that's nice. I'm going to make these a little bit longer just in case um, because I. Right now, the lengths are based on the sample data that happens to be there. And maybe we will, would want larger data to be in some of those columns at some point. But 20 should be enough for the purposes of this exercise. So I'm going to say execute. And I got this results window here that the statements were executed. So now I should be, the table actually should be created inside of uh, Oracle XE. And if you were to go into SQL Developer or another tool, you would be able to see that empty ETL table sitting inside there. Let's go find this. I'm going to refresh. I'm in uh, Oracle XE, SQL Developer, and you can see that that emp ETL table I just talked about now exists, and it has the data types that uh, we talked about earlier. So I have an emp ID, and I have varchar two fields of 20 characters each. OK, I'm going to say OK. Actually, we can, if we wanted to, we could do uh, field mapping to uh, check uh, the, the correspondence between these things. But right now, we're, we're set up fine with, with the defaults. We could change um, how the fields in the stream are connecting to the fields in the tables, but I think we're fine the way we are. So I'm going to say OK. So I have this um, pipeline in place. I'm going to save it, because before I can run it, uh, Kettle's going to want me to save it. I'm going to name mine Kettle Transform 3. You call yours whatever you like. And I'm going to execute this now. Well, actually, beforehand, why don't I show you that we have no data here in employee ETL. I'll we'll just do if we do select star from ETL, we have no data in there at the moment. But let's change that. So I'm going to run this transform that I saved. It's asking me for any runtime arguments, and I don't have any, so I'm just going to press run. Does its thing, and it looks like it says the transformation is finished. I don't see any red, which is a good thing. It tells me that it basically processed it read and wrote six rows here, which seems like a good thing. So if I go back to SQL Developer, and I see what's, what's in that MPTL table now, now I get the six rows. 
that corresponded, as you might expect, with the data in my original file. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, we did check that truncate table option, so what if I were to say Fred's last, last name is not head, it's dead. We'll just change that and make sure that our data syncs up appropriately. Go back to spoon here, and I will just simply rerun this transform. Okay, transformation is finished. Again, it's read and written six rows. So we'll go back to SQL Developer, run the query again. We can see that Fred's name has now changed to dead. So it is picking up the data, truncating the MPTL table each time, and then pulling in my new data. All right, let's add one more thing, and that is we're going to run a SQL statement uh, against the table once it's been populated. So I'm just going to search for SQL in here, and I can see execute SQL script, which sounds like a good thing. I'll bring that over here, and I'm going to say I'm going to want it to update uh, a certain row. So we configure this, and we'll say something like update, uh, what do we call this? I think it was emp etl. Let's just remember what I did. Yes, emp etl. So I'm going to update emp etl. If I could type set last name equal new last do it this way where last name equals dead. Sort of a fanciful thing to do. And we're going to say execute for each row. And we're going to say OK. And then this new step will run the SQL once it is done loading the table. So this should change Fred Dead's last name. You can see here. Fred Dead now should be set to new last by this SQL statement once the job finishes. So again, we'll create a hop here to unite these two things so it knows where to go after it finishes the Oracle XE table. Excellent. Looks pretty good. We'll save it one more time and we'll run it. No runtime parameters. We execute. Looks like it's all done and hopefully has executed all my code. So I will go back here and check one last time and hopefully Fred Dead's name has been changed to Fred New Last. And it is Fred New Last. So remember, what we did is we built a simple ETL pipeline here, took data from a CSV source, we loaded it into an Oracle table and Kettle helped us build that table on the fly based on structural intelligence it had about the employee CSV file. After we loaded the table, and remember we set it to truncate, so each time it, before it loaded the table from the CSV file, it blew away all the existing records, and then it added uh, that data back in. And then we said, well, even afterwards, the data in the file might not be the be-all and the end-all, so, we, the end all, so we, might not, we might want to add other transformations to it. And we executed this extra SQL script, which we configured, that said, you know, this is just kind of throwaway logic here, but clearly we saw that demonstrated that this was executed and actually updated the contents of our table. All right, so that's been a brief tour of Kettle. Hopefully it gives you a half-decent idea of how to use it, how to configure a simple ETL pipeline. As I said in class the other night, we could do more complex things like have error handling and conditionals, etc. But for now, this is a pretty good start for us. All right, thanks for your time, folks.